The Green Bay Packers just had their biggest playoff win since I don't know when. Uh, but I wanted to ask Green Bay Packers super fan Noah Clark this question, along with some other questions about the state of the Green Bay Packers, how we are feeling about the Dallas Cowboys win, and what we think is going to happen next in this awesome playoff run. Uh, now we can call it a run for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, we're going to get into this here on today's episode of Scotty Six Pack. Find it wherever you find your podcasts. Um, and wherever you're listening to this here podcast, you can also listen to Noah Clark's show, Snap the Pigskin, who we welcome in here. Uh, I am on their show also this week, so very excited to welcome Noah Clark back to the show for the first time since we uh, previewed the Badgers women's hockey season. So thanks again for coming on back, Noah. Yeah, it's great to be back on the show. And also, thank you for coming on our show, too. We're really happy to have you on on STP. It's very fun. Uh, I, I can't wait. I, love I can't wait to talk Packers. Packers. Yeah, it's 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 a blast, especially when 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 it when Sam is on there with us with all three of us. It's a good group. It's, it's uh, just- yeah, it's good. I I I wanted to say like this crazy internet world. Uh, it it is meeting you two has been has been good internet friends. I'll, I'll put it that way. It's been <laughs> it's been a good time. Um, but when we are not on the internet, uh, we are watching the Green Bay Packers win playoff games. Uh, against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, how are you feeling coming off of that playoff game? Um, what a win. What a fun ride. How how are you feeling about watching that just without thinking about what comes next? Just watching the game, feelings of winning that game itself over the Dallas Cowboys. You know, even beginning into this game, like I had no expectations for this Packers team coming into this postseason. Because they already had, like, the way that the season had gone, they had already accomplished, like, so much of their goals this year. And for a team that was in a rebuild year to make the playoffs, too, really incredible. So this was, like, the first time I was just like, if we lose, we lose. You know, if we win, hey, we win. But to watch that game unfold, it was, like, so amazing and so surreal. Like, I couldn't have been, and I'm sure any other Packers fan couldn't have been happier to see the way that game unfolded, to see the way Jordan Love played, and to see the way that that offense played. I mean, they were, that was the best performance that we had seen from them all season long. And, you know, probably going all the way back to week one in the Bears game. I mean, they were just, they Mm -hmm. came out, you know, right out of the gate on fire and they did not stop. And, I'm just, you know, I'm happy. I'm I'm happy. There's there's nothing more to say. I'm happy. And, you know, now it's on to the next challenge and we'll see where it goes, basically. Yeah, it was a blast. And I think that begs, you know, the question I, te- I teased at the very top of the show. You and I talked about it in, in the pre-show here. The Green Bay Packers, as you reminded me, had not won a playoff game since 2020, since winning over the Rams in the divisional round before the Packers lost at home to Tampa Bay in the NFC championship game. So we've had a few years here between playoff wins and this feels like a big, a big win in terms of the direction of the franchise, how we feel about this team knowing, all right, last few weeks weren't just, a, a weird quirk of playing some bad teams. This this was beating, I mean, beating the heck out of a good Dallas Cowboys team. And so this is a bigger playoff win than what? what th- this ranks where in terms of recent playoff victories for the Packers in your mind? You know, honestly, like there's a couple. There's like, I could give you two. I mean, this is the biggest biggest playoff win since the last time they beat the Cowboys in the playoffs, which was 2016, when they were also underdogs in that game. They were not really favored to win that game. And the Cowboys, again, had a home playoff game where the higher seed against the Packers and, and, and still lost that game. So there's that one. But, you know, the other one that me and you were talking about off air was the Bears game back in 2010. Like that... I think is up there. The Falcons win. So that's three, actually the Falcons win is probably the bigger is probably one of those, but 
if I were to like pinpoint this, I think it, it, the biggest playoff win for this team would probably have to say, you know, 2016 against the Cowboys, because you, you talk about it. It's, it isn't lining up like how the way that that story went, but like, not like this team really didn't have many superstars in 2016, like especially on the mm -hmm. defensive side. And it's the same thing on the offensive side. Like you look at the secondary in 2016, the Packers had Ladarius Gunter, Kentrell Bryce, <laughs> Micah Hyde. And uh, who was the other one? Oh, and um, Josh Hawkins, I believe was the corner for, for this Packers, for the Packers secondary. Like they were just unbelievably bad. So for them, you know, and for Packers fans, I think, you know, this is something that they can hang their hat on, you know. I think if you compare it back to the 16 year too, there, there are some parallels in that was the Aaron Rodgers quote unquote run the table year mm -hmm. uh, where he was playing. I, I mean, at a level that we may not see another quarterback replicate literally ever again uh, because that defense was absurdly bad. And Aaron Rodgers carried that through forever uh, un until I came to a crashing halt against a, a phenomenal Atlanta Falcons um, offense. And this year has some similar vibes where Jordan Love has been playing like the best quarterback in the NFL. I'm not saying he is the best quarterback in the NFL, but if you are looking for a quarterback to play at a certain level, to call them that, that is what the last, I mean, few weeks in particular have been. Uh, so I think there's some nice parallels there, but if I'm answering the question personally, I, I have always been one who I, I value rivalry wins, maybe more, maybe more than others. Um, I'm once again, not beating uh, the accusations from, from someone on Twitter who says, maybe I should just follow the bears. If I, if I talk about the bears so much, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I value those rivalry wins. I'm also biased because I was actually at that NFC championship game. Um, but I, I think it's the biggest win since then. Obviously, a Super Bowl is a Super Bowl, and maybe you can just put that in a different tier uh, unto itself. But I think this is the biggest playoff win since uh, the 2020 NFC championship game. Because, at you know, even if the Packers don't make it, at least the Bears didn't. Um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so... There are a ton of great performers in, in this game. Um, who who stands out above the rest? We, there's obviously Jordan Love. Let's name a, a non-Jordan Love MVP of this game. But if you just want to give some kudos to Jordan Love, I will not stop you. Yeah. I mean, if we're taking away Jordan Love, I mean, he was very close to having a perfect passer rating in this playoff game against the Cowboys. But non-Jordan Love aside, I mean... I got I got a player that 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 is also a Cowboys dominator, and his name is not Aaron Rodgers. It's another Aaron, though, Aaron Jones. He against the Cowboys, like every time he plays the Cowboys, he has career games. Like mm -hmm. he, he goes for a hundred yards consistently against them. He averages he has like, never he has never rushed for fewer than a hundred yards against the Dallas. Yeah, Cowboys. and never. and he's and he's dominant in, in in every Cowboys game. I think he had two touchdowns at his first meeting in in mm -hmm. twenty seventeen. He had three in the game in twenty nineteen. He had two i two or one in the game last year and this year he had this year he comes in and he has three again and i got to give it to Matt LaFleur for i i ripped on him at the beginning of the season at, at the midway point particularly in october because they were not running the ball enough and the big thing you look at with this offense is it's predicated on setting up the run and and getting that RPO working so you can get the defense off. And the guy that makes that work so well is Aaron Jones. I mean, Aaron Jones in his career statistically has averaged eight and a half yards per carry in his career. That is really good for a running back. And he just like, sometimes he just refuses to give him the ball, but down the last couple weeks of the season, He's been giving him the ball more and he's been, you know, attacking teams, you know, with the running game and it's worked and the Cowboys, their run defense was not good. And that was the big weakness that I think that Matt LaFleur exposed was giving the ball to Aaron Jones and he got a hundred yards again. I got to give him credit. 
I, I think you look at from where he started this year, Aaron Jones, when he had that hamstring injury at the beginning of the season in Chicago to having being in and out of the lineup with injuries, you know, he had a hamstring injury then he came back, then he had a, a sprained knee and he was out for a few more weeks. And for him to come back and have the performance that he did shows a lot for this Packers team. And I, I love Aaron Jones, man. He is my, he's one of my all time favorite Packers right now. And it, and he makes it, he goes yeah. up on the list even more after that dominating performance. Every week, Dallas. every week. Um, I think you said Aaron Jones rushed for rushes for eight yards per eight attempt. and a half, eight and a half yards, eight point five yards. I think that, that was a, there was a, against the Cowboys. Are you saying no? Just in his career, in his career, like there was a stat out there in his career, he's averaged eight and a half yards per carry. I don't think that's quite right because he has, I'm looking at pro football reference and he's, he's averaged yeah. five yards per attempt. Um, so I think that's yeah. not quite right, but right eight, eight, right. it would be absurdly high. Um, it could, it, it might've been a stat a few years ago, but who knows? I think it's, I, that might be against the Cowboys. Um, yes. but yeah. anyway, um, yeah, Aaron Jones has been phenomenal. I think another perhaps, uh, um, player here to, to name is, is Zach Tom. Um, Love Zach Tom. Uh, on the offensive line. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I am a big fan. I, I said, um, I said in the show last week, I'm a big fan of both options that the Packers have right now at tackle, both Zach Tom and Rasheed Walker. Uh, I think R Rasheed Walker is making a great place for him on the roster, regardless of whatever happens with David Bakhtiari um, for next year. But Zach Tom allowed zero pressures to Micah Parsons uh, in, in this game. And he just looked absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he has been exactly what the Packers needed on, on that side of the line. And he's another one of a series of great Brian Gutekind's draft picks. And, and one that it seems that the Packers just always seem to consistently nail on the offensive line. Uh, so I think Zach Tom would be another question there uh, or another, another candidate there, but both of our candidates came on the offensive side of the ball. There were some interesting things that happened on the defensive side of the ball. And the defensive side of the ball is of course, been the big question for the Packers this season, surprising given $90 million of cap space to offensive players are not playing on this team uh, in Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and, and David Bakhtiari. Uh, you have the youngest offense in the NFL, the youngest crop of pass catchers since forever. So regardless, the defense has been up and down and we got a really up and down game from the defense of this game in particular. I think there's a case for Joe Barry being safe after this one, regardless of the up and down performance, but what do you what do you think? What what does your gut tell you? Is is Joe Barry safe in his job as the defensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers after this performance? Oh man, I mean, well, with Joe Barry, like you said, up and down performances he's had this year. You 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 have some good performances for him, like we saw towards the end of the season, like he had against the Vikings and against the Bears, and even against the Lions, you know, on Thanksgiving Day. But then you have these just like and, and, and Sam Jamini tells me this, you know, you have these unforgettable like losses, you know, like, and Joe Barry has unforgettable losses, like, or, or, or unforgivable losses. That's mm -hmm. what I meant to say. Unforgivable mm -hmm. losses. The Giants loss, almost unforgivable. I mean, you, you can't lose to the Giants, especially, you know, when Tommy DeVito is the quarterback, or in this case, Danny DeVito, as we like to talk talking about him on snap the things kid, but you can't lose to you can't lose to a team that doesn't have their starting quarterback in the Giants. And then you look at it, the Panthers game, you can't let Bryce Young throw for throw for like 300 yards. That's just that's just not acceptable. I mean, and especially they were the worst team in the league. That's that's pretty tough. And so but now we fast forward to the playoffs. He did a phenomenal job in the playoffs. I mean, defensively, they were able to get 
turnovers. They were able to get stops on Dak Prescott and, and this team. And for right now, honestly, Kedrick, I think he keeps his job. I, I, I know Packer fans and myself are going to be hating to say that because I want this man on my team, but he's done enough. Honestly, I think to keep his job, you look at the job he's done down the stretch of the season where he, you know, where they had the bears and the Vikings two must win games that they needed to have. And they won both of those games. And and then in the, the side of that is the yeah. Panthers game was also a must win game. Yes. And defense, they did not win that game because of the defense. Yes. And, and that's the other thing. Too. And that's the thing too. It's like, well, you have the Panthers game to look back on, but they got the job done. The defense got the job done when they needed to get it done. And that's really impressive. But I think this is the interesting, weird dichotomy of the Joe Barry conversation. Of course we could say like, there's always what we wish would happen, what we think should happen, and then what we think will happen. And at this point, I think what will happen is that Joe Barry does return next season. I think Matt LaFleur has made it clear through his words and actions. He wants Joe Barry to be the defensive coordinator of this team. Um, but you mentioned he has these weird losses where he just lays an egg uh, against a, a Tommy DeVito, a, not a loss, but it sure felt like one in the moment against uh, against Bryce Young and the, and the Carolina Panthers. But he also weirdly has defenses that just show up when you absolutely need them to this game against a Dak Prescott, who is maybe should be the MVP instead of Lamar Jackson will probably be the runner up for the MVP. That defense shut down Patrick Mahomes earlier this season. Uh, this defense also shut down San Francisco in 2021. Uh, allowed them to score only 13 points in, in that playoff game, uh, in that 13, 10 absolute banger. Um, and hypothetically too, like if you take away the special teams gaps, it should have been, they held in the three in right. that game. Yeah. Ex yes, 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 exactly. Um, yeah. How could I forget? I had the, it's another game. I had the yeah. fortune of being at, um, it was <laughs> I was also at that game. Oh, really? <laughs> cold, cold and snowy. That's all I remember. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Joe Barry has this weird tendency to show up when they absolutely need it most and absolutely just choke the heck out of games when you don't think that defense should. I don't know. I also think Joe Barry is safe, even if they shouldn't. Um, maybe the answer to this next question is the Joe Barry of it all. Uh, but we, now we look ahead to the 49ers. What are you most worried about here? Is it this high flying Kyle Shanahan led offense? Is it the defense? Is it the Packers defense? What are you most worried about heading into Denim Jeans Stadium? Denim Jeans Stadium. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, the biggest worry, the thing that I worry about with the Niners is offensively, you know that they're going to score points. That mm -hmm. doesn't concern me at, at all because I know that they're going to they're going to score points. You, you just can't stop this offense. They're they're really one of the high flying offenses in the NFL. You've got Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and um, Christian McCaffrey. You're not going to stop that offense. And Brandon Ayuk. And Brandon and, Ayuk. And Kyle Uzcheck. Yeah, like you, you're <laughs> just you're just not going to stop that offense. But the biggest worry for me is can the Packers counter punch and that's where it gets very frustrating for me is this defense for San Fran. Mm -hmm. They are always, you know, they're kind of the backbone of this team in the, in the years that, you know, we've seen, you know, with Steve Wilkes now as the defense coordinator in the past with D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala, that has been really their staple point is the defense and the, the mainstay, the, the, the glue that keeps that defense together is, is that defensive front. I'm more worried about the defensive front against the Packers offensive line. Can they stop Nick Bosa? Can they stop those pass rushers from getting home? Can they maneuver Fred, you know, can they maneuver Fred Warner around? That is more of my concern because Jordan Love, yes, he played a really good game against a really good Cowboys defense. I mean, they were they were fifth in total defense this year. That's great. But you're going up against a Niners defense that has a lot of pieces on the defensive side, particularly on the defensive line and the linebacking core that really make it hard for you 
to go out and 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 win games this year. And that's kind of my big concern is can they counterpunch against this Niners team knowing that the Niners have some incredible studs on that defense? Yeah, I, I think the defense is actually where the 49ers are, are a little bit gettable, frankly. Um, I'll, I'll have more on this actually in uh, our show tomorrow here. Uh, we're going to do a bit more of a scheme breakdown of, of the 49ers Packers matchup, but the, the offense is definitely what, what worries me. Um, the, the 49ers have some really good, good tricks that they use to get into exactly the play that they want to. Brock Purdy is great at getting them into exactly the play that Kyle Shanahan wants that offense to be in. Um, I do think, however, that the Packers have some ability to stop the 49ers from getting into those plays. Like I said, I'm going to get into that a little bit more on our, our our scheme breakdown episode of this show tomorrow coming up later this week, but that makes me confident against the 49ers, at least a little bit confident. What do you think is the Packers advantage here? What makes you confident that the Green Bay Packers might be able to, to quite frankly, shock the world here and, and win this game, get to the NFC championship game? You know, it's funny that you say that because I was talking about the defense for the Niners and how frustrating it was for you know them against the Niners to get like anything going. The key, I think, for them is going to be, and I feel like this is going to be confident, going back to what they did last week and just running the ball with Aaron Jones. Like this team against a lot of, you know, this Packers team against a lot of teams this year, when they run the ball and they give Aaron Jones, you know, the ball and, and they make him the main focus of that offense, they they are one of the best teams in all of football. And mm-hmm. and they really can kill you because they can set up the play action and then you can go to those guys like Watson, like Wicks, you know, like Reed, and then you go to the tight ends, Musgrave or Kraft. That's really what could open this offense up. And the mm-hmm. Niners, I was looking at this stat that that Peter Bukowski put out here. You know, the Niners run D is not that good. They are 20, they are 27th in run defense this year it's not good it's not good and if you're the packers you would want to attack that yeah you would if you're the packers you want to attack that you want to attack that full on they did it really well against the cowboys i would not be surprised if matt lafleur goes back to that same game plan and attacks the niners with that and that's what makes me i think feel confident about this as well so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on the on the screen real quick for our for our viewers on, on YouTube. Uh you can follow at Scotty Six Pack there. Watch watch the show every day. Sometimes we have these these interesting tidbits. Um totally agree. 49ers run defense, absolutely suspect. This here shows the 49ers deep defense on third down. Uh it actually shows every NFL defense on third down. Uh by by EPA per play allowed. The 49ers are allowing more EPA per play on third down to the run than every other team in the NFL except for the Philadelphia Eagles. On the flip side, the uh, uh, by success rate, the 49ers are the worst in the league defending the run on third down. And on fourth down, the 49ers are worst in the league at both of those things. Um I think the 49ers are gettable and this here in particular is starting to convince me of a potential Packers victory when that uh, I, I teased a little bit on, on your show, uh, which fans, fans of the Green Bay Packers or of the NFL writ large should, should absolutely go and listen to snap the pigskin on wherever you are listening to this here podcast. Um, yeah. The run defense is what makes me think 49ers are gettable. This is not the juggernaut. 49ers run defense or defense overall that we have seen the last, however many numbers of seasons. Um, And when you have Jordan love who is playing like the best quarterback in the national football league, I think that gives the Packers a chance in this game. Um, It could be fun. I I think this could be a really fun game. There, there is a reason I was at least making an attempt to get to this game. Um, even if it failed. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, but the confidence, I, I will give credit though. Jordan Love has played really well in a lot of like big, you know, big time moments. Like, and it goes back to Thanksgiving. It goes back to Thanksgiving day. Like not the Bears game. I could care less about that. That's the Bears. We knew the Bears were going to blow that. We knew the Bears are going to blow that game somehow, some way. But, <laughs> but this game against the Lions was when it really showed that he could really play on a big time stage in a big time moment. Because once you he beat the Cowboys, yeah, against the Cowboys. But I'm talking like the how he got you know got to where he is now, where we're mm-hmm. seeing him be like this incredible player. Like it goes back to that Lions game on Thanksgiving. Okay. Like in that pressure. You know, in that situation where you're on Thanksgiving Day, everybody's watching you, you're playing in it, you're playing on the road. And for him to go out and dominate, that's what really started it all. And you look at it because after that, they beat the Chiefs, you know, they beat the Chiefs in Mahomes, they beat the Vikings on the road. That's a tough stadium to win at. You, you beat the Cowboys on the road last week. It's, I, you know, if Jordan Love goes out and shows that he can ball out against the Niners, like, the confidence level, I feel like going into next season is very high, but also to his confidence level right now must be surging, surging going into this game. Oh, I, I think we can we can take a step back from confidence level going to next season. If they oh, beat yeah. the Niners, no one's going to talk me off of this team winning two more games. <laughs> oh, no. 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 And the way that the other side of the bracket looks too, like you got the Lions and the Bucks. They're, th- those are potentially winnable games. Like if you Th- those the are Niners. absolutely winnable games. I mean, Packers have won one of those games already, one and one against one of those teams, and dropped it, dropped a game that they had no business dropping um, to Tampa Bay. Um, would love, would love to go down to Tampa Bay and and watch and watch them win that game. But all right, I any other thoughts on on this here? game against the San Francisco 49ers or, or the game previous against, against Dallas. Got it. You got to give credit to Matt LaFleur. And I also, you know, we talked about this on snap the pigskin and I go and I have to reiterate this, but give credit to Brian Gudikins, like any Packers fan that, you know, wanted him, you know, fired as the general manager, or at least, you know, wanted him on the hot seat in 2020 after he passed on Justin Jefferson, CD Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Patrick Queen, you know, all these guys in the first round to draft, to trade up, to trade up and draft a quarterback in Jordan Love. And it, it, they're pretty quiet. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I always say that because he has paid off really well. And I hope people look now and see, you know, this is the way how you should develop an NFL quarterback for your starting team. You've, you, this is the way, this is the model that it should be worked at. The Packers have done this like twice, three times already. And they've got three French and they've got potentially now three franchise quarterbacks in the last 30 years. It's really incredible. And then not even too with this draft, not even with the 2020 draft, but in this draft too, like just, how well Goody nailed this class. I mean, half of this draft class, if not all of this draft class, is contributing this year to this immediate, team. Immediate, immediate contributors yes. to this team. First, first round pick, Lucas Van Ness. Second, second round pick, uh, Luke Musgrave, who had a huge touchdown in this game. They stayed on his feet. Other yes, round he stayed pick, on his feet. Jaden Reed. <laughs> Reed, who has been maybe the best Packer wide receiver all season. Tucker Kraft, who has been phenomenal this year. Colby Wooden on the defensive line. Uh, Sean Clifford, who <laughs> Packers fans have been clamoring to get into games. Um, Packers fans who wanted uh, Sean Clifford to start, he got playoff action. Uh, Dontavian Wicks, who also might be the best wide receiver out of this class. Carl Brooks on the defensive line. Anders Carlson, sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. But then Carrington Valentine, who has questions, but a seventh round pick who is a starting cornerback on this team. Like, Every single one of those of the first what eight draft picks they've had they've had are immediate contributors. Just yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal draft class class by Brian Gudikins. And some of those guys are why why I think this team just might be gettable. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I really hope Brian up, Gudikins gets Executive of the Year. I really I don't hope think he he's going least- to. He should. The way he should. This, the way that this draft, the, the way that he drafted this year, and the fact that they've made it this far, 
and they've got another franchise quarterback is nothing short of amazing. He should. Um, I think a big personnel question though, for good against that we can give him his flowers. What if they don't trade Rasul? How much better are we feeling about this defense if they don't trade Rasul? And I know, I know this is like, we're in the playoffs. Uh, we're in the playoffs. The Green Bay Packers are in the playoffs. They've won a game in the playoffs. This is not really the best time to be asking what if in season personnel decisions, but what if, what if they don't trade Rasul? That is possible. I mean, it is tough. He was the highest graded corner by pro football focus on but, the Packers at least. But they also traded him when it looked like this team was nowhere near close to contending to them, yeah. to get into the playoffs. And I think that also has to come from Brian Gutekunst too. I think he, like, I wonder if he knew that, like, he didn't know that this team was going to be that good down the stretch of the season. Like, I, I thought, you like, can't. I thought they were going to have at least, like, from the way that October went and how bad this team was, I honestly thought that they were that they were dead in the water. I thought they were going to finish with a, a top 10, top five draft pick. But, you know, the NFL, not for long, you know, that, that's that's what it is. It, it, that's what it is. And I'm curious to see what happens, who they draft with that third round pick that they got from the Bills, because, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? It might turn into something pretty amazing. I mean, they broke the third round curse by drafting yep. Tucker Craft. So, yep. Maybe the, the curse just, you know, is gone and we keep churning these third round picks out now. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, Noah Clark, thank you as always for joining the show. Uh, yeah, thank you. Please, please tell, please tell our listeners what you, what you got going on. Uh, where can they find more, more Noah? Yeah. So you guys can find me on Clark Rigo at the app formerly known as Twitter as Kedri as my good friend Kedrick always says, you know, the app formerly known as Twitter. You can find me at Clark Rigo on Twitter. You can also find me on Snap the Pigskin and on the student section. We will be starting actually back up next week, Tuesday, uh, January 23rd on at on WSUM 91.7 FM Madison or at WSUM.org. Uh, we go from six to seven o'clock. You can catch me, Joey Bonadonna, Chrissy Birdsall, and Anthony Winker. On that show, we talk all types all, of sports. all fantastic, all fantastic content creators, voices, yes, play by play, color people, by the way, just all all fantastic. WSUM's uh, finest talents. Yeah, truly, 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 truly. People that I have had the the great pleasure of of getting to know a little bit on on these here corners of the internet. Um Anything else? I know I interrupted you a little bit to give kudos to other people who aren't you. <laughs> oh, give follow the same Jamini. He doesn't have Twitter. But uh, you can follow his Puckworms podcast. I mean, it's it's always fun to listen to Sam and Anthony talk hockey and stuff. All righty. Well, that is wonderful. Thank you once again, Noah, for coming on the show. A blast as always. Um, that is going to do it for this here episode of Scotty Six Pack. You can find us on YouTube at Scotty Six Pack or on your podcast platform of choice. While you're there, leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments, hit the subscribe button, helps other people find the show. I have been your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website or app formerly known as Twitter at Kedrick Stumbrus and follow the podcast for latest updates at Scotty Six Pack. We will be back tomorrow to talk more scheme, more breakdown, a little bit more in depth on why I think this 49ers team is gettable. And then, and then you will not be able to talk me off. You will not be able to talk me off the cliff. The cliff. Yeah. Go back, go.